um, welcome, uh, Dr. Gal uh, Diwas Araya is a professor of history and political science of African study, and Mr. Berkut Kiros, MBA holder, MBA holder. Uh, welcome to Father Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Today, uh, Cyber Power of Tigray uh, is welcoming you, uh, Dr. Galadius uh, and uh, Mr. Berkut, about the current uh, Ethiopian situation. Uh, my first question is, uh, what is your assessment briefly on the current situation in Ethiopia? Okay, okay, that's a relevant question. And... Uh... I mean, it's quite obvious to me that uh, the present situation in Ethiopia is actually uh, not only of concern to me, but quite frightening. Because this, if it goes like without being controlled, it can go out of hand and can dismember the whole Ethiopian nation state. It's going to be a very dangerous situation we have now in Ethiopia. However, uh, since uh, uh, our listeners should understand the cause behind all this problem, behind all this crisis, it's uh, uh, of uh, paramount importance to me to begin with uh, how it all began. Uh, uh, in the last two and a half years, as all of us know, uh, that is, since the ascendance of, uh, of Abiy Ahmed to power, Ethiopia was actually in deep crisis. And this crisis in terms of uh, uh, internal displacement of people, of the Ethiopians, in terms of having a skirmish and uh, uh, violence in the Oromia region, uh, in terms of instability in Somalia, Afar, and what have you, by comparison, Tigray was the most stable of all uh, regional states in Ethiopia. And uh, it had become a formidable, a formidable uh, uh, testing ground for the present regime because uh, by and large, Tigray had become actually like uh, a de facto state doing things for itself uh, uh, and then uh, they've gone actually to the extent of holding uh, an election. So this actually really bittered the so-called Abiy regime or government, and it actually planned to retaliate and, and do something about this thing. So they prepared, they've been preparing for a long time actually uh, to attack. Tigray, although they were mainly focused on the leadership of, uh, of the TPLF, as they always claim. But if you go back to almost three years, they've been blocking roads to Tigray. They've been cutting a lot of things to Tigray. They've been uh, actually portraying Tigray as, as if it's not part of Ethiopia. They've been cutting budget. They've been doing so many incredible tanks. Uh, 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 even, I mean, this, this, this is a very foolish government we have in Ethiopia now, even with respect to the locust invasion we had last time. Uh, they were going up to Kobo, but they don't want to go to Tigray. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible the way they do tanks. But it doesn't come as a surprise to me because uh, on either side, from the Abi side in Ethiopia, the Eritrean side on the other side, they actually wanted to encircle Tigray. But it's not going to be that easy. It seems to me they have miscalculated. They have miscalculated. <laughs> in fact, Kohan, if you remember, Kohan tweeted recently, telling him, you're fooling yourself to Abi. <laughs> because you're actually <laughs> fighting with a very hard, strong organization. Even if you get support from Eritrea, you're not going to do it. It's not going to work. 
they miscalculated completely. Uh, so overall, I see it is dangerous, of course, but my assessment is that ultimately Tigray is going to prevail. Why? It's not because the Tigrayans or because I'm a Tigrayan myself, uh, and I'm saying that I am trying to give it a, a certain uh, picture which is of more of mythology, but based on historical facts and on, 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 on the strength of organization, uh, the TPLF is by far stronger. Tigray is also by far stronger compared to other, other, other regional states in Ethiopia. In fact, what we have Tigray now in terms of, they don't talk much, but in Tigray, the military is more and more organized than any other regional state in Ethiopia. And recently I was watching a video interview on TMH. Well, today, as a matter of fact, it was uh, Johannes Hedogo, former Air Force pilot. Uh, he was telling, he, know, he knows in and out about the Air Force thing. He said, actually, they have all aeroplanes, the most inexperienced ones we have, they have them now. The highly experienced Tigrayan Air Force pilots uh, were actually told to leave 50% of them, as a matter of fact. These were great fighters, great pilots, great. And look at that, how the government of AVI so incredibly uh, miscalculated the situation. Without those experienced guys, what are you going to do? How are you going to fight? On top of that, they also underestimated, I guess, I guess because he himself, you remember last time speaking in Tigrinya, Abi, what a foolish leader. He was saying, I'm going to come and bombard you. Stay away from the cities. <laughs> Where are they going to go? <laughs> you don't say that. No leader says that. If he wants to do that, he probably didn't know the, 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 the military uh, 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 strengths of Tigray and uh, the equipments they have. Uh, uh, the military hardware they have, including missiles, by the way. He didn't know, or he, he probably, I don't know what's going on. He doesn't have advisors at all. Now, what he started, what he provoked, and, and tried to attack and encircle to right, didn't work. On the Dasha side, <laughs> I'm sorry for, the, for those people, the militia, Amara militia because they're Ethiopians, they are brothers as well, and sisters. They died in thousands. He doesn't care, he's sitting in Addis Ababa, okay? He, he inflicted so much thing, Gondor was completely, Gondor Hospital was completely taken over. They don't have space anymore, started taking people to Addis Ababa. It's far away from Gondor, okay? So uh, uh, by and large, what he started and provoked actually has now backfired. Why it backfired? Because there is already crisis within the government itself. He reshuffled uh, his cabinet. <laughs> now it's not General Adam, the chief of staff. It's actually uh, Burhanu Jula, the chief of staff. Now it's not Gerdu, who is the foreign minister. The Malcolm O'Connor is the foreign minister now. He's going to hold two positions at the same time, foreign minister and vice prime minister. And another thing that I have heard uh, today is uh, there is also a crisis within the Amahara regional state leadership. Because some of them have said, why do we have to go to war? For what purpose? Okay, the same question was raised within the military itself. What's the purpose of fighting Tigray, they said. And the same thing happened in the Air Force, ETF and Air Force as well. This is a crisis that's going to engulf, engulf Abi himself. What is he going to do now? He is going to be in deep trouble. 
Ethiopia is in deep trouble. Tigray is going to have some, Tigray is going to uh, pay some sacrifice, but believe me, <laughs> Tigray is going to prevail. So this is how I see it in short. Thank you, Dr. Galadios Araya. Uh, the same question for uh, Mr. Burkett. What is your assessment briefly on the current situation in Ethiopia, please? Thank you, Ephraim. Uh, Dr. Galadios has uh, uh, gone in details, but I want to add a few uh, uh, in terms of uh, what happened and what transpired. This is an uh, unwanted uh, war or tragedy that's swollen up on Ethiopians. Uh, uh, first of all, since he came or he ascends to power, Ethiopia, if we have defined it in terms of uh, economy, in terms of security and uh, diplomacy, it just uh, went downhill. Uh, look, the war is forced upon us for every reason. We have uh, every right uh, to uh, fight this aggression. Since he captures the power through deceit and the sweet heart, he won the hearts of many Ethiopians, uh, you know, the last 20 years. Look at it. Even he went to get a, a Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, look at his uh, deceit uh, in terms of a peacemaking man. He was trying to be the darling of the West. Look at what happening in Ethiopia. He is just destroying Ethiopia one by one. As Dr. Galaudia said, look at the defense forces. Look at the defense forces. We are in, in a very precarious situation in terms of this dam. Let's begin on the dam. The dam was showing a growth every year, 9%. Since he took power, it reduced from 5 to 6%, 3% a year. And then he cut 1,000 megawatts. This has happened without any advisors. He went and he signed. I mean, as a recent, Donald Trump, what did he say? He made a, an agreement and he backed up. So what he does, he went to Saudi Arabia. He went to, uh, he went to Egypt. I don't know this guy, what he did uh, on behalf of Ethiopia. Nobody knows the damage he has created as an ex-spy. I mean, think about that. So what I don't understand is many Ethiopians, they see what's happening to this country and they kept silence. Look at the economy from two digits growth from the last 10 years, registering Ethiopia as one of the fastest economy in the world. Look at where she is now zero and he lies as usual to the parliament he's getting six six plus grows every year that's all lie so the country is in ruinous in terms of economy in terms of security in terms of life being destroyed so this is a chaotic atmosphere the last two and a half years and i agree the only stable place was our Tigray. Now, the Tigrayans, because this is the hard won, was that they won for self-determination. After the session, not alone for the Tigrayans across Ethiopian nation nationality, that was the best and the foundation for Ethiopian survival. Now, this unitary party, they want to create uh, what happened, you know, just like an emperor, Haile Selassie, he wants to be a king and he wants to be like Isaiah. God knows what he wants. You know, sometimes he's telling us he wants to be a king. Sometimes he wants us to be like Isaiah. I don't know. But what I know is the country is going into ruins. So my suspicion is he has a mission to destroy Ethiopia. And that's what's happening right now. Look at it, what's happening now. Some of the army that has been with our all expensive weapons across Eritrea. I mean, look at this is hard currency that has paid those, you know, millions and millions. So he's working Kahoot with enemies of Ethiopia, including the neighboring countries uh, of Eritrea. So Ethiopia and Ethiopians, they were in a crisis for the last two and a half 
years, there was no peace at all. You could move from one town to another town. Look at what's happening, except I'll make, except the Tigray. And Tigray has been a challenge for his rule for the last two and a half years. I mean, the, the war for the Tigray, it started two and a half years. They've been beating the drum of war, like Issa. They've been uh, the, uh, extermination of Tigrayans openly. So this is the situation, what it looks like in Ethiopia. Sometimes you don't believe it is existence. I mean, it looks like you are watching a movie. I mean, the whole Eposarian atmosphere, when you see, it's so hard to find them. And now, so many of uh, his supporters are cheering for innocent people are being bombarded. War, this is not a toy. And no Ethiopians, uh, I mean, that I know, still they don't condemn this kind of atrocity. Right now, I call in Addis Ababa. Tigrians are being persecuted. Tigrians are being expelled from federal and other businesses. He's creating ethnic cleansing uh, with uh, his uh, gang members. And I hope uh, one, uh, no matter wherever they go, uh, the law is going to catch them. So Ethiopia is in chaos. Ethiopia is in crisis. Uh, this is what I see right now, and that's what the whole world is seeing. And I am—I just fear that it's going to be worse, uh, probably close to Rwanda, the uh, extermination and uh, uh, genocide in terms of that magnitude. If this uh, psychopath leader is not stopped, yeah. Um... Thank you. That, that's, uh, I think um, you have uh, answered uh, those two questions that I was supposed to ask you, but um, uh, people are saying that this is a genocide. So I think, uh, Mr. Burkett, you seem to agree with this. And um, the thing is, the last three years, how he came to the power, people were explaining that uh, he's supposed to limit the transition and to have uh, an appropriate party for the, uh, after his time over, but he didn't do the election. And also he he blocked the road that connects Tigray and Ethiopia. And whoever blocked the road, he never done any measurements or any uh, force to open the road for about two and a half years. And also we had the desert La Costa infestation all over the country. He never spoke Tigrinya, he encouraged the people or to send them some uh, kind of um, help. Instead, he spoke to Grinya when he wanted to send the bomb. So he, he's been doing a lot of those things. And as he said, Mr. Burkett, he put a lot of Tigrayans in house arrest at this time. So why is the former prime minister decided to this? Deadly confrontation that jeopardizes the security of the nation. Is this a genocide? Would you call yeah. this a genocide? Would uh, you call this, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, absolutely, we are heading to that. I mean, genocide it doesn't start, you know, uh, it starts from something. But what leaders and uh, what uh, want me to believe, it's not going to happen. But I see the signs toward this genocide. I mean, if we are profiled, as a Tigrayan, and then uh, expelled from federal and from any business activities, even, you know, some of the, uh, you know, merchants, they can't go uh, out of uh, Addis uh, to do their own business. Uh, some of them, Tigray origins, they are held in Addis Ababa Bole Airport. I mean, those are, uh, I call it ethnic cleansing. I mean, he doesn't have to kill, but there will be assigned God knows what he's going to do next. So, uh, if I have to go a little bit back, uh, uh, especially uh, on his legitimacy, uh, he he claimed because of COVID-19 or coronavirus that election should not be held. And this is a, a, absolutely a ploy because the last two years, he was too busy consolidating his power. So uh, time was not enough for him to consolidate his power. So uh, to do more damage. So... 
uh, he extended it uh, for uh, indefinite time. Now they are saying one year, uh, maybe another two years, God knows, who knows what. I mean, those uh, uh, actions you have to see. So what I'm thinking is, uh, I think his mission, as I have said, is just to, to destroy Ethiopia and he's doing well. I mean, quite honestly. So uh, if you see Tigrayans across Ethiopia, in particular in Addis Ababa, they have been house arrest, some of the military leaders, especially, you know, professionals, high caliber intellectuals. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we have a responsibility as uh, Ethiopians and Tigrayans and the whole world has a responsibility to stop this uh, psychotic uh, madman before doing something else. And this is the time that we have to stop if we have to talk about genocide. Genocide, it doesn't start in a blue moon. Those are the signs that lead us to genocide. When you start profiling people out of, uh, you know, some of because of who you are and because of uh, your origin, because of uh, uh, where you live, those are the signs. So I am afraid if we don't stop this kind of uh, stupidity, uh, it's going to go to uh, something that we don't want to believe or we don't want to see. Good. Uh, Dr. Gladius, I, I, I want you to add a little bit of uh, uh, statement on this question. Um, okay. The prime minister, the former prime minister, called the Tigray People Liberation Front uh, leaders a junta, uh, or a junta group. Um, those TPLF has been elected by the people of Tigray, even though yeah. if it is bad or good or whatever it is, would you, he's not a social activist, he's a prime minister, he's, is he really acting as a prime minister respecting the people of Tigray and the, the, the Tigray People Liberation Front? And many Ethiopians choose silence to this deadly conflict. What will be our role in social media to highlight the plea or the dilemma of Tigrayans? That's a good question, very good question as a matter of fact. However, uh, I would like to make a note on what uh, Mr. Baraka said with respect to genocide. A little bit on that and I'm going to go to that question he just asked me, okay? Uh, okay. I believe, uh, I believe strongly that in Tigray proper, the people of Tigray are not going to be the victims of genocide. But the people of Tigray, everywhere else in Ethiopia, as they have done already, could be targeted and killed and, and, and prosecuted. It can go on and on and on and on because there are Tigrayans everywhere in Ethiopia. Because in Tigray, they can defend themselves. So genocide, actually, by definition, is uh, the extermination of an entire race. As it happened to the Jewish people in the 1940s, as it happened to Native Americans a long time ago, as it happened to the uh, Aborigines in Australia. That is not going to happen in Tigray, okay? Unless Tigray is completely, completely finished. Uh, uh, on the contrary, I see before they completely, uh, as they wish, destroy Tigray, the government is going to crumble. Because it's not just against Tigray. The Romans are not satisfied. The Afars are not happy. The Somalis, except for Mustafa, the Somalis are not happy with this guy. The Somalis are saying, that, in fact, as a matter of fact, the Democratic Party of Somalia the Somali Democratic Party rejected Prosperity Party and he went and destroyed them. Okay? So uh, 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 he is in contradiction, not only with Tigray, with various nationalities in Ethiopia. Okay? But uh, to what he just said with respect to. Uh, um, um, right, say it again. I mean, calling the Junta or. Uh, yeah, Junta. <laughs> that's that's a laughable, laughable. Junta, 
I, I studied political science. Junta actually originated in Latin America. Uh, it's a military takeover. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> so it's, a, it's actually, I don't know how he used the word. He himself probably doesn't know what that means. I mean, contextually speaking. Uh, uh, in any case, uh, you see, what I see uh, uh, in regards to this uh, leader, uh, you called him former prime minister, but if he, if he was a junta, himself a junta, they take they take they take they take power by force, not legally. Okay, he's an illegal legal person in power, so he is a junta himself actually. <laughs> okay, in any case, uh, I see two deficiencies with respect to this leadership. Number one, no vision at all. No vision at all. If leaders are not visionary, the country is in trouble. Number two, no willingness at all to do something for the people. Okay, those these two qualities are not there at all. With all their shortcomings, the former leaders of Ethiopia, especially the kings, they had some vision and some commitment to their people. You don't see any commitment with this guy. In fact, he seems to enjoy that he actually rather collaborate with foreign elements who actually are enemies of Ethiopia. The neighboring guy, Isaias Afuorke, he has become almost not only friends, but like, you know, two people who are working hand in glove. Conspiracy against Tigray, encircling Tigray, damaging Ethiopia. And this has been going on for a long time. In fact, they had a wish to dismember Ethiopia. They had a wish to do that. And now they, the advisors, the people who are advising Abiy Ahmed are the former Derg members, former Derg members. This guy do want to revenge upon the TPLF. Even if they destroy the whole of Tigray, they don't care. They burn Tigray, you remember, housing? They did that. They want to do the same thing now, but they are not going to do it. They are not in a position to do it. Okay? They are actually, most of them are old now. Physically, they cannot move around, but they advise Mr. Abi Ahmed to do those things. So the conspiracy has been going on for a long time against the ground. It's not a new thing for me. I, it doesn't come as a surprise to me, as a matter of fact. So whether he says junta or not, it's... A, doesn't make sense. It's senseless as a matter of fact. But anyway, the whole idea is it, if you attack Tigray, he's going to cover so many things because elections are going to be elongated. They can be forgotten completely. The, uh, uh, the, 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 the dam, Renaissance dam, the issue about Renaissance Dam is going to be now secondary. People are not going to talk about it. People are going to be preoccupied with other things like Tigray, Tigray, Tigray. And there is obsession about Tigray in the whole of Ethiopia. And the people around him, the opportunist elements within the government, all of them, remember, it's the, the paradox is this. This is incredible. I mean, history sometimes is cruel. The Mecca Mokonnen, the, the Gedu, uh, the Jula, all these people. All, Jula actually was 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 once POW of the TPLF. Okay, he was prisoner of war. They made him a general. And now he's saying he's insulting them. He's doing those things. He's saying Kahadiwoche. He's saying all these things. All these things. The Mekamakunin, the same thing. There is a video that the, the Tigrans should show the whole world when the Mecca was actually praising the TPLF as comrades, uh, praising them. Now he's saying, he's saying, these are traitors uh, sitting over there in Addis Ababa. The guy actually became rich. He actually enjoyed power, state power, because of the TPLF. They don't want to give them any credit. I, must, I myself have criticized the TPLF for not being democratic, but they have done so many good things to Ethiopia. 
transformed Ethiopia. Barakat actually uh, uh, earlier said uh, the, 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 the economic growth, with respect to economic growth, during the APRDF, it's not me. The, I, the IMF and the World Bank uh, have testified that the Ethiopian economy, unlike any other in Africa, was growing by 10 to 11 percent, double digit. Now, Rabbi <laughs> Ahmed said last time in the parliament, as Barakat noted, it's growing by 6.21 percent, a complete fabrication. The IMF said the Ethiopian economy is actually growing by 1.9 percent. Very sad. They've They've postponed all the major projects that were initiated by, 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 the, by, by the EPRDF. Remember, the, the other railway that connects Djibouti and Magale is completely abandoned now. The many sugar plantations are completely abandoned now. So many of them. But he goes all over and then, and then uh, initiates parks and what have you. Parks are not priority to Ethiopia, really. The people are impoverished. They need jobs, they need industry, they need farming areas. Those are the priorities for Ethiopia. So that clearly shows that he doesn't really care about Ethiopia, let alone about Tigray. Okay, he himself, he remember what he said when he went to Tigray, praising the people of Tigray. And that, he's a dumb, I mean, what can I tell you? I cannot even define this person. He's probably like, what can I tell you? Uh, he has double personality perhaps, because he says something today he does, that he contradicts tomorrow. Okay, what he was talking about Tigray now is completely false. He is actually going against Tigray, not because, uh, uh, not because the Tigrayans have done something bad to him, but he is revenge. He's doing something on that because they told him on his face, you are no longer prime minister as of 25 of September. He could not incarcerate Dr. Debrecen because in Magaleh, but he incarcerated Bakala Garba, Jawar, and Lidatu, because these three people also said, you're no longer prime minister of September 25, okay? So it's actually, avenging himself as a revenge politics going on in Ethiopia. But at one point, he's gonna exhaust all the cards, the political cards he has in his pocket. He's gonna exhaust them. Then he's gonna fall apart. That's what I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gajos. Uh Mr. Burkett, I, I, if he may have something to add on this real, uh, uh, important to question how the uh, the former prime minister is uh, disobeying the constitution and calling and leveling TPLF junta and um, those uh, like not sending masks to uh, to uh, students uh, of uh, Tigrans, uh, which is <laughs> we got those aid is from international uh, aid uh, organizations. Yeah. Uh, this is just uh, one thing in black in the road is and all that so what's your message uh, about this uh, if you can add some uh, think on dr gladius's uh, uh, statement yeah okay. I, I i agree what dr gladius has said but uh, also it makes me laugh at times uh, sad i mean this guy is a psychopath uh, uh, to tell you quite frankly he needs to see a psychiatrist uh, i mean psychiatrist uh, in terms of what he said what he does uh, what I am saying this is, uh, uh, he spoke to Grinya to terrorize people. I mean, <laughs> he, he, spoke, he didn't speak before. I mean, he said, I'm going to bomb you. That's what uh, the message is all about. But Tigray people are hardened. And one thing that makes me sad too, he's ask, he accusing TPLF as uh, some organs, some people who bite uh, uh, the one there. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy who is beating, you know. <laughs> who is biting the hands of uh, uh, the Tigray who fed him uh, when he was uh, a, a soldier? You know, he lived there for two years. He had, he should have known better about uh, the resistance and uh, the 
uh, you know, the uh, uh, the stamina of the Tigrayan people. But uh, I, uh, he was he was there physically, but he was not there. Uh, that's what it tells me uh, in my mind. Uh, as far as uh, uh, what's going on and what should be done, uh, I think uh, from the start, he didn't care about the Ethiopian people. He cares more about himself. I mean, look at it, what I heard recently, his wife and children are here. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, on social media and people who saw her. I mean, uh, think about it. Just like his predecessor, he is just uh, uh, making his exit. But I can tell you this, and I can't tell to anybody. A person like him who has committed so crime, no matter where he is, he will face justice. That's what I, I, I want to say. So he has to know. I know uh, he will watching this uh, interview because uh, he spent most of uh, his time. Uh, uh, what are the social media? Yeah, social media. Uh, so I just want to pass this message. He has to uh, understand that he's not going to escape from uh, justice. Uh, on the second level, about Musk and others, I mean, this is a guy for two and a half years, road blockage, economy blockage, as if there is no food in Tigray, uh, as, as if there is no uh, meat in Tigray, as if there is nothing in Tigray, uh, because that is the perception they have, because everything comes from other parts of Tigray can sustain itself, can feed itself. I wish we could have done much more on agriculture sector as much as we have done on industrial sectors and other areas. And this is a good lesson that has to be uh, thoughtful in the future. We can be a self-sufficient nation. Uh, we don't need. I mean, that's the two and a half years has proven itself. Um, and as I said, I mean, uh, like food for work. I mean, this is an international aid. <laughs> and uh, even, you know, uh, such a low leader, even Dirk, even Dirk, you cannot even compare with the Dirk, with his ruthless, uh, he will never say, I'm coming to Bombay or something to that nature. But this guy, he will do anything to stay in power. But one thing, an obstacle Dirk, for him. I, I never heard, I never heard Dirk uh, did home arrest Grannis in Addis or any other places. Well, even, uh, even, uh, even uh, Gassasa, who is the, uh, his, his vice president was a Tigran, and many of them were working in, uh, but this guy did, took all the Tigran people from Ministry of Defense, as well as from all telecommunic, all from the whole thing. They told, he told them to stay home. Yeah, and but, uh, yeah, but uh, as I said earlier, he is just destroying Ethiopia one by one. I mean, look at it. You start from a defense. Now the Egyptians are, you know, talking about bombing and all these things. Now the general was talking about three three weeks ago that he has enough uh, forces to repel any aggression from uh, Israel or from any other country. I mean, look at it. What Dr. Galadi has told us uh, a couple of minutes ago, how the defense forces morale is broke down and most of Abel and senior pilots of Tigrayan origin, half of it, uh, they are uh, uh, house arrest or uh, they are in prison. I mean, this is a guy. I don't understand why the Ethiopians cannot see what's going on in their country. It's not about the Tigray. This is not a fight about Tigray. This is a fight about Ethiopia survival as a people and as a nation. And that's what the silence Ethiopians must break and stand for Ethiopia. So far, I haven't seen this. It is not a fight between uh, uh, Abi and Tigray, which is, it is a fight. Overall, it is a fight for the survival of Ethiopia, and that has to be underlined. Great. Um, okay, let me go back to Dr. Gladio, Saraya. Um, okay. So I think um, the disobeying the constitution, uh, he, he had a lot of something that it, nobody will uh, trust him or believe him because he changes his words uh, in a few hours or a few days, and he thinks that people in Ethiopia has short-term short term memory loss 
because they don't remember what you say today, but they could remember what you say. To, uh, they don't remember what what you said yesterday, but they could remember what you say today. That that's why he's uh, he's following something, and he he say something yesterday, and he will say something today, and whatever. But anyways, what will be your message to inform and galvanize uh, to stimulate? I mean, Tigrayans and international community. I mean, especially those uh, human rights, human rights watch, because we will have a lot of problem in East Africa this time. And uh, uh, there are some uh, in Europe, uh, in America by itself, you know. What's your message about this situation for those international community and as well as our people, Tigray? Yeah, I mean, uh... This is this we have to broadly uh, address this thing because it brought a very important question, very important question. So the address is not the message is not going to be to uh, the Tigrayan people only. The message is going to be to all Ethiopians, as a matter of fact, particularly to Tigrayans because Tigrayans are the victims now. Now that we understand. But uh, uh, I just was writing to somebody today before we started this interview, and uh, uh, some Tigran uh, friends were concerned and told me, what do you think about it? Uh, what's going to happen next? Uh, some of them are terrified, some of them are concerned. But uh, uh, believe me, I am not terrified at all. I'm concerned for sure, but I'm not terrified because Tigray is going to prevail. This guy is going to actually create something bad for himself. Because if he, if the people of Ethiopia were on his side and attacking Tigray, the equation was completely going to be different. But now the people of Ethiopia are not with him. The Romans are fighting in Wallaga even now as we speak. The, 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 the uh, 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 Onad Shane is actually fighting even now, okay? So like I said uh, earlier, actually, most of the people in Ethiopia are not satisfied with that, what has been going on in Ethiopia for the last two and a half years. The grinds are bitter, of course, because the last two and a half years, it was encirclement, so many bad things against the grind people. 100,000 people, the grinds, have left Ethiopia to the grind. They become rich. Fijis in their own country, as a matter of fact. Okay, so many problems. So uh, my message is uh, actually what I like about the TPLF leadership is uh, 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 they never, 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 never say we are going to succeed or we're going to form a Tigrayan nation. They never said that. On the contrary, they say, we're going to fight to the end. We're going to uh, uh, take away this person in Addis Ababa from power. And then we're going to really salvage Ethiopia. Not by themselves, not by sacrificing again, but by cooperating and collaborating with other forces, federalist forces. But relatively, it's the Tigray, the TPLF, that is much stronger. Uh, the other ones, some of them are behind bars, the leaders of the opposition parties, and by and large, they are weak because he's been doing his job. He's been doing his homework, actually, to dismantle all these organizations in Ethiopia. So at one point, the Ethiopians also should, in fact, support the cause of Tigray for their own sake and ultimately to salvage Ethiopia from the current crisis. Okay, to the people of Tigray, my message is crystal clear. Be concerned, be organized, un unite, come together like one person. However, don't be terrified. Okay, nowadays, for instance, if there is, we're going to do some help to the people of Tigray, we have to do it here, mobilize the resources of the Tigrayans in the diaspora. I myself have started already campaigning and, and, and lobbying 
and con contacting people like the Security Council and others and others, international organizations like International Rescue Committee and, and then the uh, Human Rights Watches. We have to do those things too. We got to get organized and, and, and I, I have already written to my uh, uh, senator in my state and to my congresswoman in my state, the man and the woman. I have told them about the crisis in Ethiopia and the Tigrayan crisis as well. So we have so many things to do. In fact, nowadays, we Tigrayans are going to be uh, loaded with a lot of work, but it's our historical duty. We have to do it. We cannot be silent when the people of Tigray are being attacked, okay? But my hope, my hope is this. At one point, the other Ethiopians will realize, they've, re they've already realized in Gondar, by the way, because the people have died, so many of them, in the couple of days. And, 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 and they said, why do we fight? Why are we fighting? For what purpose? Okay? They've come to realize that. And then the military in Ethiopia too, the defense forces, they should say, why do we fight? People of Tigray are Ethiopians. They are our brothers and sisters. They have to say that. They have to stop this guy. Okay? Because otherwise, if he's not stopped, he's going to destroy so many things before he's gone. Okay, this is my main message to all the Ethiopians and to the people of Tigray as well. But more message to the diaspora Tigrans. Like I said earlier, we have to be unified. We have to do a lot of job. My friend uh, uh, Barakat uh, Kiros is involved in so many community organizations. So he has his own way what to do. I have my own website. Barakat has his own website as well. I have the African idea. He has the Ethiopian observer. We have so many, so many things that we can use to really uh, uh, teach our people, to connect with our people, to uh, send messages to our people, blah, 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 blah. But this is going to be a day and night uh, job. It's not going to be easy. We're not going to leave our Tigray people alone in, in Tigray. So I send message to them too, to the people of Tigray in Tigray. I am telling them, you're not alone. We are with you. We're going to be behind you. You're going to be victorious. Ultimately, Tigray is going to triumph. Okay? As a result, when Tigray triumphs, Ethiopia triumphs as a matter of fact. Then, then peace and stability is going to come to all Ethiopia, not just to Tigray. Because these people are going to go. They're not going to be there forever. They're going to go. Okay? But there are some certain things that we have to do. Organization is very important. Political consciousness is very important. Earlier, uh, uh, Mr. Baraka said, why are these people not doing anything? Why, do they, why can't they say a word? Why can't they oppose all those things? He's right, but two things we have to consider. Number one, the authorities, the authorities uh, uh, gravitating around, gravitating toward uh, Mr. Abi are opportunists, all of them. They don't care about the people, they don't care about Ethiopia. The parliament, there was a muzzled parliament, now forget it, it became <laughs> There was a woman crying last time, you remember, when there was some massacre in Wallaga. She never said a word when the Grants were attacked. <laughs> if you cry, you cry for all Ethiopians. You don't cry for one single nationality. I sympathize with the Amahara people, the Oromo people. They are my people too, although I happen to be a Tigran. So if they were real Ethiopians representing Ethiopian interests in the parliament, they should have uh, sympathized with the Tigrayan people. They never said a word when Tigrayans were attacked in Gondar, in Ambo, in Woldia, everywhere, as a matter of fact. Never, not a single word. Now they are saying this and that and this and that and condemning and everything. If you see now, the word is 
these are these are kadatanya these are traitors and everybody because 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 the prime minister say that the makamakon is the same thing other people say the same thing the people on the street say the same thing they have attacked our our defense forces in Tigray, the prime minister said which is completely false completely false but the people repeat and repeat that they don't know anything they are not informed they're not politically conscious that's the problem we have so unless there is some kind of uh, 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 information and consciousness they are not going to do anything oh they've attacked the military and everything they don't even question i mean the defense force they have guns too are they not going to attack too are they not going to fight too the people don't have anything in their mind they don't think they're not thinking so we have so many problems that's why this guy is talking about all these things he took it for granted actually it looks now temporarily do you believe, it do you, looks, do you believe dr bloody was how, how yes. could people believe that a very acute uh one semen is minus uh they have four mechanized kufloto which is yeah. uh and <laughs> maybe more than half of the ethiopian ministry of defense was in tigray how militia or uh, Tigray people could attack this equipped army and professional army uh, the Tigray regime for this for this equipped uh, I mean military of Ministry of Defense military because they have arm they, they are armed they are yeah. they are not voluntarily uh, yeah. join the Tigray yeah. people and the Tigray uh, Liberation Front, they can just fight, and that will that fight will take maybe a month or <laughs> to see that by itself in Tigray. So what what's what's the I I, I don't get it. You know, he, when he said that the Tigray people is attack the whole entire army in Tigray, and then they just <laughs> you see when it, when you want when you when you want to do something, you have to say something in order to mislead the people, hoodwink the people. So okay. they attacking, attacking, they attack the military, our defense forces in Tigray. Mm -hmm. And everybody is doing the same thing. It's the same song now going on. However, the defense forces said, we're not gonna shoot a single bullet against the people of Tigray. We've been here for 20 years, they said. We are family with the Tigrayan people. Some of them even said we have married Tigrayan, Tigrayan woman. So we are not going to do it. After all, they said too, our mission is to defend Ethiopia by the constitution, not to kill, not to kill the people of Tigray. This thing should not be known. It has to be hidden. The government in Ethiopia is bitter because of this. So they say it's the Tigrans who hit them, they are traitors and what have you. He was he was he was actually betrayed by the division in Tigray because they want to be on the side of the people of Tigray. That is interesting now. That is very interesting because that's why I told I told you early on, Tigray is going to prevail not only by itself, but the division, by the way, these are like forty thousand people. It's the division. Yeah. Yeah, they, are may, big. they are really I'm, big. Yeah, if yeah. I may add uh, to what uh, Dr. Galaudius has said, first of all, my heart goes to those uh, 400 million, so 400 uh, uh, Amharas who has been slaughtered in the southern part of Ethiopia. And uh, mm -hmm. we condemn uh, for the atrocities that has been committed, and that has to be noted. Uh, we feel their pain as Ethiopian, as Tigrians, and we don't want to see in any part of Ethiopia such atrocity. On the second level, uh, the Ethiopian deforce forces and the militia, why are they fighting for? To just uh, keep a psychopath a leader? That's what, that's what I mean, quite honestly, when it boils down, because this guy, his mandate 
is expired. He has a rubber stamp mm. parliament, which most of them are PP prosperity members. And mm. uh, they're just uh, accept what he has to say. And all the declarations against Tigrayans been uploaded with cheer. And also on the social media, especially YouTube, you know, anything that happens against Tigray, those people are just uh, uh, hearing a, a drum of war, cheering, uh, as if uh, we just we are foreign alliance that we are being slaughtered. I mean, those people are senseless. This war is a senseless. It should not be happened. I mean, for what purpose? There is no purpose, actually. Actually, the war is just when it comes to us because we are defending. We didn't go anywhere to invert some neighboring territories or uh, as they claim to be. We are in our area. We are in our domain. So we have every right to protect uh, our country, our nation, our people. So my message will be for the defense force, you don't have to fight to keep a, a psychopath leader. That's all it violates with its uh, followers. On the second level, I have a message to our Eritrean brothers and sisters. This war, you should not get involved. And you should take a stand, not to immerse yourself. We have learned the last 20 years a lesson that should be brought us together. We don't want to repeat the same mistake because of a mishap of a, a leader. So stay away, keep yourself, keep your distance. Whatever problems we have among us, we can solve it in, in, in the table. It didn't help us the war. Tigrayans has paid sacrifice so much for the independence of Tigray. And Tigrayans are the one who recognize as the first for the Eritrean independence. There is so much commonality. There is so much brotherly and friendly that is really sealed with sacrifice. So my message is don't get involved. It is not your war. It's not even our war. It is forced upon us. On the second level, also Ethiopians, especially the Amhara, who are beating a war drum against Tigrayans. See your people, what they are going through. War, everyone is going to lose. The degree of loss may be small and bigger, but at the end, we as Ethiopians, we are losers. We should not get involved ourselves to this. Look at it. Five years ago, where was Ethiopia? Now, where is Ethiopia? In terms of security, in terms of economy. I want them to see what is happening to their country. The country is being destroyed, pledged, becoming lawless. And we are building the biggest dam in the world, like Egypt, who are keen to destroy this. We're going to protect that. So the irony is people who was opposing, I'm not, you know, condemning that people should not change. People should not change their views anytime, but not 180 degree trajectory, like Brahan Naga. Those are the people who are opposing of the dam and they were receiving money from Egypt on their own admission. Now they are in charge of the uh, political affairs of uh, Ethiopia. It is, this is irony. This is irony. <laughs> they are talking about unity of Ethiopia and he spoke in Tigrinya to address. So on the third level, my message is to two grand brothers and sisters. We should be vigilant. We should be resolved. We should unite no matter what differences we have in terms of uh, what it should be our Tigray. The bottom line is this is about our humanity. This is about our survival. We should come together. And I call upon all the grants, regardless of our differences, to rally behind State of the Christ administration. This is a time 
that we can together because of our enemies we are going to be united as one voice and thank you for doing that actually because if they didn't do this we wouldn't be here all of us so this is a good opportunity for Tigrayans to work hard for our people for our nation and rally behind as uh, Dr. Galaudio said we have potential to do more each of us let's reach to our senators let's reach to our neighbors let's reach to newspaper be vigilant try to discharge our responsibility the people who are fighting for are most of them are kids who could be our kids maybe some of us are grandkids this is what we have to see every day their image the responsibility that they have shoulder to keep this country and people safe we can do more in diaspora thank you Ephraim. thank you um i'm just going to say this um uh, this war is in between families like uh, dr glad was in mr bracket say uh, no matter uh when it's the war we all get hurt we all get hurt but I want to ask you one yeah. thing, final uh, question. I start my interview with you about the current war in Ethiopia, which was declared by Prime Minister uh, of Abiy, former Prime Minister. But um, because he's not, um, <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't say current pr uh, Prime Minister. In, okay. <laughs> there is no reason to say that. But who recently <laughs> awarded a peace prize, actually. He... he recently awarded a peace prize i don't want to forget this and i want to ask you about this do you suggest the norway peace prize nominee to disregard or take away a peace prize uh, honor from him dr god the uh, so you're saying about the peace prize the uh, Nobel peace prize the, yeah the Nobel peace prize um we, we, does he deserve a peace prize is gathered or <laughs> when we ask the Norway Peace Prize to disregard or to take away Prime Minister Abiy's yeah, Peace Prize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, look, uh, this is how it works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you are in political science in international studies, it's an ABC thing, actually, how the world operates. Uh, and... Uh, when they actually decided to give him the Nobel Peace Prize, so many people were asking questions. Does he really deserve it? What did he do in terms of peace in Ethiopia? And then the commissioner, the chair of the commission of the, of the uh, uh, Nobel laureate, they actually, she, she was a woman. She said, we're giving him so that we encourage him to make peace, you see? So when they say that, what it means is they already have established their own person. We have to give this guy something so that he serves our interests. That's how it goes. Europeans have been doing this for hundreds of years. When the British were governing their colonies, they had a, a, a system called indirect, indirect uh, 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 governance. Direct was that of French. What it means is they appoint chiefs, local chiefs, to do business for them. If they do it directly, the people are going to know all oh, this English guy, this white guy. But the chief is their own person. He's going to come with like so many things. So you give him a peace Nobel Prize, it's going to come off like a lot of things. And remember, when Abiy first came, he was acting like a saint. <laughs> he was saying so many good things. You know, he was talking about salam, about and, and, and love, and all those things, and then talking like as if he's a preacher, uh, that... Uh, May God protect Ethiopia, all those things. And it camouflaging himself. So the Nobel Peace Prize actually was a camouflage. It was a wrong thing to do. 
But from the European perspective, they view Africans as the potential promoters of their interests. So they give you something. They reward you. They've done the same thing in the United Arab Emirates, you remember? Both Isaiah and <laughs> they've given them something, they put something on their tank, they give them, they give money because ultimately the Arabs see to control the Red Sea zone. They need elements that promote their interests, Isaiah and Avi. But the world is going to say, oh, these guys are popular. These guys are doing something. They even get reward from these people. So it has to do with vested interests of those nations. So in the final analysis, Abi was actually promoting the interests of foreign people, foreign nations, not of Ethiopia. Even that of, of the Renaissance Dam, thanks to some elements within, within uh, the people who were in charge of the Renaissance Dam, who actually co continued the construction of the dam. But the, 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 the initial objective was to stop it completely. Because I remember very well when Abi Ahmed went to Cairo and then he was saying, Wallahi, Wallahi, Wallahi. Okay, to, uh, to, to the president of uh, Egypt. And the president of Egypt said, I was never satisfied like this in my entire life. And what could it be? When Abi Ahmed returned to Ethiopia, in a conference, he said, maybe it's going to take another 10 years to complete the construction of the dam. You see? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is what's going on. So does he deserve it? No, please, no. No, not at all. Martin Luther King, yes. Even Obama doesn't deserve it, by the way. They just gave it to him. Because after that, he went towards Afghanistan. <laughs> What's the point of having Nobel Peace Prize? And you conduct war. What's the point of having Nobel Peace Prize? And then he attacked Tigran singularly. And then he want to uh, uh, destroy Tigray. That's not the mission of uh, the original, the Nobel, the guy himself. The Nobel guy who was an engineer actually had a mission, sincere mission to actually uh, implement peace in the entire world. It's not working that way. They, they're just using that thing to get their own people who are going to be promoters of their interests. That's how I, I see it, actually. If I interject right. myself here uh, also, uh, it has to be known that, uh, yes, uh, I, I could have uh, be a little bit respectful for the prime minister, but I am not since uh, he is not a prime minister of Ethiopia currently. He is a junta himself. Uh, uh, I will say uh, one day, it's my belief, uh, will be, you know, as fake as his degree, the uh, Peace Nobel Prize. And I believe in it. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I want to go to that level because he deserves what he should be. And we have to call it as it is. Uh, on the second level, uh, yes, he was a darling from the West. Uh, when West, uh, this guy, he came uh, within about a year, less than a year. He has nothing done. The peace plan with Eritrea was there. But he just refused uh, the president of Eritrea. He doesn't want to make a peace uh, with uh, EPRDF. That's the bottom line. I mean, he hasn't done anything. Actually, for his credit, uh, Prime Haile Mariam de Sali, he alluded for the fact he wants to make a peace. He wants us to go to Eritrea, as you remember, uh, Dr. Galarius. But yeah. on the other side, he doesn't want. So he has never created uh, a new plan, a new, it was something that had been there. But I agree, he was a good potential candidate for the destruction of Ethiopia. And that's what uh, he got because they see something on him, not to benefit Ethiopia. See, the politics is intertwined 
in so many webs of lies and deceit. That's what we live in. So look at what he does. So he is uh, uh, destroying Ethiopia, not destroying Igad, by the way, Igad, the build. Look at what he does. He destroyed Igad uh, because our neighbor was not in favor of Igad. Actually, he was condemned it. So anything that has been built, the same thing what we have seen on the Trump administration, what Obama has been built, and Trump has destroyed it one by one. And this guy is taking the path towards that, whatever built in 20 years. See, he said, I wouldn't say nothing has been built in 20 years. There are so many good things. And then after a couple of weeks, nothing has been good out of 20 years if you are different. So he has like a Camelon uh, character, uh, what we call. He changes <laughs> even and he changes in color when it fits. I mean, quite honestly. So I think uh, we have to press for uh, uphill fight uh, to remove this tyrant. And I hope, and I'm saying it again and again, the defense forces should understand what they are fighting for. Simple. Why are we, they, they just have to ask, why are we fighting for, fighting for? To keep a tyrant, illegitimate, want to stay in power? That's what it boils down. The crime for Tigranes is, according to him, because they have exercised their mandate to elect their leaders. We can talk about whether it's fair or not. That's not the issue. But 2.7 million Tigrayans exercise their right. No matter what, we're taking care of a caution about Corona. He doesn't care about Corona for themselves. As you said, he could not even send the mask, face masks, <laughs> let alone, I mean, <laughs> if he cares for Corona, I mean, he doesn't care for anything. What he cares is about himself. Look at, we talk about he sends his children. Now he sends his brothers and sisters and he might send, who knows, himself. So I think uh, what we should understand about this uh, psychotic leader is uh, he's going to destroy Ethiopia. We have to be vigilant and other Ethiopians have to rally behind uh, the defense forces, the people, especially, especially the Amhara people who are ordering and being fed unnecessary unsubstituted rumors uh, about Tigrayans. Tigrayans always has been good friend, family, other people, respectful. Think about it. nothing happened, one Amhara in Tigray, nothing. All the students, all those uh, federal workers, how many bugs has been coming from different parts of Ethiopia, a dead body, brothers and sisters, See, our people have the patience, the forgiveness. We could have gone war long time ago, or all those atrocities being against our fellow Tigrayans because who they are. But we're trying to look the future, the bright future. We're trying to see the positive side. And those are a work of bad apples. But now we came up to this full scale war and it is a very sad tragedy. And everyone should avert. It's not only the Tigrayans. We are fighting now in a different directions from north, south, east, but also other nation nationalities who's gonna lose so much. They have to watch a war. Is there a peaceful, is there armed to stop this mad tyrant? from destroying Ethiopia and Ethiopians. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I concluded my interview with you, um, I, it, uh, it, I'm going to give you one minute just in case uh, uh, to address something that I did not ask you, you would like to address uh, for uh, the rest of the world. Otherwise, we can okay. uh, conclude our interview. OK, so glad thank you. you. In fact, Thank you, uh, Mr. Ephraim. Uh, in fact, as a matter of fact, I was going to say that too, because two things came into my mind 
before we go. Uh, uh, with respect to uh, the people-people relationship, we have to be very careful. Let alone the Tigran and Amharas. By the way, they are similar in many ways. Their culture is similar, the food they eat is similar, their uh, uh, traditional costumes are the same, they have the same faith, uh, Ethiopian Orthodox and Muslim, except for the language. The language uh, actually, Amharic and Tigrinya all evolved from Giz as well. And their physiognomy, you cannot make a distinction between a Gondari and a Tigrayan. They are really the same people. So uh, we have to uh, elevate ourselves beyond reservations and, and hatred. Hatred is bad. Those who hate to grants are sick themselves. They are sickened. They are sick. Okay? But in regards to that, I would like to mention something very interesting that I watched last time. And this happened in Wuro Tigray. Wuro, Eastern Tigray. Wuro, you know, Wuro, Kulto Alo. I do. Uh, I do. There is a, yeah, between Addigrat and Mu'ala. And then uh, there is a militia. I never heard of the existence of that militia. And then this militia, this militia is uh, uh, co uh, the commander of the militia is Amahara. He said, I've been here for a long time. I am at home. Tigray is my home. I am ashamed of what happened to the Tigrayan people in Gondar four or five years ago, he said. And then they are armed, by the way. They actually uh, uh, go around the streets. And there was an Oromo as well who said the same thing. I've been here for a long time. Tigray is my home and blah, blah, blah. The ordinary people, ordinary people are good people. Wherever you go in the world, by the way, unless they have these uh, fanatic people who train them to become evil, ordinary people are nice wherever you go. The second thing I want to say that we have not mentioned, but we have to bold enough to say about it is, although we're talking about Abi a lot and other people a lot, there are some Tigran elements who are collaborating with him against the people of Tigran. I'm not going to mention names, you know them. These people, they have to think twice. Once Tigray prevail and the government crumbles, where are they going to go? What are they going to hide? These Tigran elements in Addis Ababa are talking about destroy the TPLF, destroy the TPLF. They should have said, actually, let's go to a round table and make peace with the people of Tigray. They can oppose the TPLF. I have no problem with that. But they should not oppose the interests of the Tigrayan people. And these Tigrayan elements in Addis Ababa, although they talk about TPLF and all those things, they never mention the, the, the blockage to Tigray, not even one day. They never said, why are we blocking the highways to Tigray? If they had interest about Tigray, really, a Tigray element himself, what a betrayal. What a betrayal. So I send message to them, think twice. Next time, he's going to really, really say, why my God? Okay? But it's going to be too late by then. This is it. I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, we have stayed so much. Uh, we discussed. I just like to conclude my remarks uh, with uh, one of uh, uh, the quote uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Debrezion uh, in one of uh, the speeches he made. Uh, uh, was in Tigrinya, but it was translated, and uh, I would like to translate it in, in English. In English, uh, we will never back down for anyone who intended to suppress our hard work, uh, one right to self-determination and self-rule. And that is the bottom line. Tigrayans are going to fight because they paid so much sacrifice. Uh, over 56,000 uh, 56, uh, lives. And this is the one that really propels them uh, to keep their faith. Because the faith came out of sacrifice, uh, not only for Tigray, it's for whole e Ethiopia. And we're going to follow that path. And as a Tigrayan, I will do my part. And others expect to do their own part. Because everyone of us have a potential to do something 
for our people. So unite, Tigrayans, no matter what differences we have about the TPLA. Now it is about our people survival, about our people, about our nation, about our being. We can stop this madness with the help of other Ethiopians as well. What's happening to us, it's going to happen to them tomorrow. God knows we have a, a sons and daughters who can defend us. There are a lot of uh, people who kind of defend themselves. And I feel sadness at this time, like, come on, the tragedy you could have been stopped long time ago to avert such kind of disaster. And, uh, and uh, I'm just hopeful uh, one day uh, people will wake up and stop this madness and come unite and strong Ethiopia and prosper and uh, just be Ethiopianism as it has been before uh, when we grow up. No more division, respect to each other and work hard to build this nation. Ethiopia mm -hmm. needs us. We need her. Thank you. I thank you so thank much, you. both uh, Dr. Galau Diwas Araya uh, and also um, Mr. Barakat for being with Cyberpower of Tigray to give this clear message for the Ethiopian people and the entire world to stop the war declared by Abi Ahmed. I thank you so much. And this is not our last, maybe this is our first interview. We'll see you some other time. I appreciate it for being with me. Thank you, thank you so much.